In this video, we're going to convert from serger to cover stitch and walk you through the different steps. So we are going to need different threading. So there's a few threads that we're not going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the red one. That one's completely gone and nobody goes through that tension dial. And we are going to add our purple thread, which is going to be going through our cover stitch looper. So it'll go over the top and around to the back side, and I'll show you where that's going to actually go. On the top here, we're going to be using the, um, and we're going to put in all three needles for this, but you could have it be a wide th two thread cover stitch by using the left needle and the right needle or we can set it up for all three. Now what I'm looking at are actually these pictures right here. And you'll notice that we have our yellow thread, our green thread, and our blue thread going through needles. But the needles are not where the serger needles are. They are gonna be moved forward to the new position for cover stitch. That means we don't use the, the serger needle or serger loopers and we use the forward cover stitch looper. So that's a lot of information. Let's, let's just break it down. It really doesn't matter what order you do everything in. So I'm going to just start, actually, since I'm right here at needles, is I'm going to go ahead and move each needle up to the closer position. So this is the left needle. And I can usually do this with my fingers, but remember you have, and I'll probably use this a little bit, the brush with the hole on the end of it. And actually I might do that right about now, kind of catch that one loosen it and you can't just add needle or you might say just add the needles and leave the serger needles in there you actually do need to remove them <laughs> so you're either serging or you're cover stitching you're never really doing both at the same time now remember these screws are probably a little bit uh, tightened so you might need to loosen them just a little bit to get them to go all the way up to their highest position. Now speaking of positions you're going to notice that the cover stitch needles will all be at different heights. Actually the one on the left is always the highest position and the one on the right is actually the lowest position and the one in the middle is just that. It's kind of in the middle. All right let's get the flat side to the back there. So at first that center needle didn't want to go all the way up and a little trick is to actually loosen the left and right needle just a hair and that actually kind of opens up that top part and allowing it to go all the way in there. So I'm not going to thread it yet. I'm going to go ahead and show you the different things that we need to do for a jet, um, switching this over to cover stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull out all the rest of the thread that we don't need here. We'll just go ahead and clip that so it's out of the way. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and lower the needles all the way down into the foot, okay? And I'm gonna come over here. There's a little lever you're gonna flip and when everything is down to the furthest position, it flips out of this little mouth. And when it does that, now the upper looper is no longer engaged. It no longer will come up to the highest position. Next, we can take and push the knife. We're gonna give it a whole spin, turn that all the way up till it's up and out of the way and click it to the back. Next, you're gonna take this white button and pull it towards you and lift the knife up and out of the way so everything gets cleared out in this area. You want to get a hold of the little table that came with your serger. So this is actually going to end up coming into position here and to do so you're going to go ahead and just take the table that's on there now and slide it to the side. And there's kind of three little points of contact that we're lining this up with. So if, sometimes people will go, well, how do this goes in? Well, almost you can set it here and then just roll it forward. And then you're like, oh, that's where it goes. So it just slides, everybody just has a place that slides in and clicks into position. And then as this comes over, everybody sits nicely in place. Now do note, you do have to have your stitch finger button forward for this to actually come in completely together there. Now for threading, let's do the easy part first. We'll get our, our needles all threaded. But this time, if you've left your threads in here, you're gonna notice you actually need to go up and over for your cover stitch uh, settings here. So instead of this one, we're going over the top one. So I'm gonna just pull all the threads back out to this position. And again, it doesn't really matter what order you do it in. So I can almost take each one, get to that step going over the top 
And the blue one, which was our upper looper, is now our right needle for cover stitch. So they each have their own little guide right here. So make sure you get each one not too crisscross. So green one in there, and our orange one. And then they'll all go behind this purple guide. And then I can take my handy dandy needle threader and push them through super easy. It's still in here, so we'll do that. So needles, all right. Look for the little heart, that's the part on top. Thread goes side to side. Make sure you put the right thread in each needle. And I've already noticed that the thread has kind of come out of the guide at the top of the needles, but you know what I'm gonna do is I'll slip that underneath all when I get these all threaded and push those in. Now I actually pushed all the little uh, <laughs> loops through and now I'm gonna pull all the loops through individually. One thing at a time here. Blue one and green one. So everybody is almost accounted for. And the threads can kind of go out either side, really doesn't matter which side they go out. Uh, they go out to the back or such. Okay, and oh, I pulled the blue one out. That's all right. I'll go ahead. So your book has a nice little picture diagram of where all the threads need to be for the needles. So just make sure that you're, you're running the same paths that the manual says. All those guides need to be threaded for a reason. Now let's go ahead and thread the cover stitch looper. And that's gonna happen over here on this side. So I'm gonna just go ahead and slide my threads over there. And I'm gonna let you see what you need to do for threading the side part of the serger. So there's a little part in the back that you wanna go ahead and thread. This is gonna be the cover stitch looper, so I'm actually doing it in purple. And then follow the little picture. You're gonna come over the first purple guide and around the white, you might almost call that tension. Come up to the side, and then you're gonna come up the front here, around to the back, kind of in this little mouth. It all just kind of catches where it needs to go. But the first time might feel a little awkward just because there's a lot on the diagram. But once you actually see where it's gonna go, there's a purple guide here. And then see this white button? We're gonna push down on that white button and out will come our cover stitch looper to this side. Now this might be where you might turn your hand wheels and then you can see it will come out even further. I try to avoid actually taking a full stitch. Otherwise your needles might uh, need to be re uh, kind of pulled out from underneath there. And then you have one place here that is for when you're setting up for the chain stitch, which you're not, you're setting up for the cover. So we're skipping this part right here. And now we're gonna go from the back of the looper towards the front of the machine, right through this area. Pull this one forward. And then you can thread the cover stitch looper itself while you're over here. So here's the eye and it's nice and big. So it'll kind of shoot through there fairly easy and then go ahead and pull that all the way out. And we're gonna actually just let that dangle. I'm gonna bring it around the other side and show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut it to a nice short length. So now I'm gonna take that white button and push up on everything. It'll go where it needs to go. And um, actually I might just bring that those needles up. So I'm kind of backing up. Nobody got a stitch taken. And now take that white button. <laughs> actually sent it right on over there. And I'm gonna go ahead and close this up and then open up the front part so you can see it a little bit better. So now it's over on this part. You can see that looper right here. And the thread, I'm gonna just pull out just a little bit from what we threaded. It's nice long tail. You really just need to leave that tail be about three or four inches long. So I'm just gonna cut it and let it hang out there. Now we're ready to stitch. Now, when we go to stitch, things are a little bit different here. So we're not running off the edge of our fabrics. We're actually stitching always on fabric. Now, I'm gonna just do this regular, not try to make it a cover stitch, just to see if we have everything going where we need it to go. And the other thing we could do is set the machine. Remember, we have the little settings. So I'm gonna look for my three needle cover stitch and see what the tensions actually need to be set at. So we've got our needles all up front here. So we have our three needles. We have 
our purple at the medium setting. We're going to set the yellow to th the three, just over three, the green to four, and the blue to five. All right, our stitch length is going to go ahead and be turned to three and a half. So we'll just go ahead and turn that to three and a half. And we've disengaged the upper looper and our stitch finger is pushed in and our knife is totally out of the way. So we have completely followed all the directions. And now we'll go ahead and stitch. Now these first couple of stitches, I'm gonna just trim these off here. Now when I'm done, I wanna bring my needles. There's a couple ways to bring this out of the machine. So one way to actually do it is just go ahead and lift up the presser foot. This is a little trick here. And take a hold of the three needle threads. Now they might need to actually be helped through because they're really, really tight with this. So I'm just giving them a little pull so they have some slack. And I'm gonna slide something underneath my presser foot so this can actually be trimmed. Watch this. If I clip this loop right here and then pull out from underneath, everything kind of does two things. It actually locks the back of my fabric for me. Isn't that beautiful? Hey, I did it right. First, start, first shot. So we have our three needle threads and our loopers down below. So here's what we actually wanna do when we go to do an actual cover stitch. So when we're actually sewing, we're gonna fold our fabric that's usually been pressed in, and we need to stitch from the top side. So this is where we want our three rows of stitching to show, so that's on the top. You'll also notice you have little marks on the top of your foot, and that's where your needles are gonna be. So you can actually line this up and feel and guide this where we need it to be, okay? I'm just watching, I have a little piece, I think it's just lint, yep, I think it is, just kind of fluff in there, so no, no problem. All right. Now the other way to take your fabric out of the machine is go ahead, take your needles all the way down to their lowest position, Okay, and then turn your hand wheel away from you a half a stitch and then lift up your presser foot. This is another way to take it out because then you can go ahead and you might need to pull gently on those needle threads, but they're not locked. So here's what you actually need to do because on the back side, if I start to pull on this purple, it's gonna come, those stitches are actually gonna start to come out. So what you need to do is actually back that purple thread back through itself and actually lock it in so no more comes out. Now, not bad for being kind of sitting off to the side of this. Look where I was able to run the cover stitch right over the raw edge. I actually did it pretty darn good. And uh, we can trim that right on off. But that is what you're looking for on the back side. And there is the perfect front side. So cover stitch is going to take a little bit to switch over. Usually when you do a project, you're going to go ahead and find yourself getting all your major seams sewn with your regular four thread or five thread overlock. And then when you're ready to do all the cover stitching or the hems of your garment is to go ahead and switch it over to the reverse and get all your cover stitching done at once. So oftentimes what I'll do is if I have a couple projects in, in the works, get them all done to that step, then switch over to cover stitch, and then you're not switching back and forth every time you need just one stitch here or one stitch there. But definitely go through, make sure you're comfortable with the different settings, and before you know it, you'll be switching be between overlock and cover stitch in no time at all.